Hey everyone, Jamie here from technicalcafe.com, and in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about both GET and POST requests in PHP, and how we can use these types of requests to take data from HTML forms and then process it using PHP scripts. So, what do I mean by process the data? So, you could take this data and then insert it into a database, you could manipulate it in some way. Uh, there are a bunch of different possibilities of what you can do once you get a hold of this data. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to access this data, and in other tutorials, we might talk about what we can actually do and show some examples of that. So we're going to be talking about the get request first, so let's just take a look at what we need to um, start off with this tutorial, and that is an index.html file, a styles.css file, and we're going to be using a process.php page. So our index.html and styles.css files are pre-filled out just to save some time. Um, what we're going to be doing is creating a login form like this, so that we can enter in some information to then send over to our process.php uh, file. So let's jump over here and quickly go over this. So we're linking our HTML file to our styles.css file, and then we're creating a basic form. So the action of the form is process.php, and all that means is that we're going to be sending the form data to our process.php file. And then we're going to be using the get method to send that data, and then we'll, later on in this video we'll circle back and try out the post method. So we're going to have two form inputs. We're going to have a username and password input. So our first input is a text input, uh, and we gave it a name of username. And it's important to note that the name attribute, uh, whatever the value is for the name attribute, is how we're going to be accessing the data that's entered into that, for, uh, into that text box. So just keep that in mind. And one thing we did for this was just give it the same name as the type of data that's being entered in. So name equals username. And we styled it up using the input form class of styles.css. For the password input, same thing, we gave it an input type, um, but of password. We gave it a name of password, and our class is input form, uh, just to style it up a little bit. And then we have an input type of submit to create our submit button with a value of submit and also a name of submit. And one thing to notice that we are going to be sending the submit button's data to our process.php page. In our styles.css uh, page here, or file, all we have is input form with a width of 200 pixels, height of 30 pixels, and a bottom margin of 10 pixels. That gives us a form, as you saw, that looks just like this. Uh, input box, input box, one for username, one for password, and our submit button. So let's jump over to process.php and talk about how we can use the get method to get the data from our index.html form. So in order to do that, what we're going to be doing is using a the get variable in PHP. And what we're going to do is say dollar, score, dollar sign underscore get, and this is actually technically an associative array. So whatever the value is, uh, the index that we put in here, is going to be the value of whatever we're trying to pick up uh, in terms of, of data from the form. So in this case, we're going to be using the username uh, value of the name attribute, and it's always going to be the name attribute. So let's go ahead and pick up a username. So we'll say username. And just to make sure that this works, we'll take this and echo it out to the to the uh, the page here. So if we save this, jump over here to Chrome and enter a username in here. So let's just say Jamie. And when we submit it, you'll notice that we get the data of Jamie in PHP. And then we can do whatever we want to this. So if we wanted to perhaps, you know, add something on there, so echo username plus um, actually we'll say dot test. We can go ahead and do that. So if we come over here and refresh, you'll notice that we get Jamie test. So basically the data is ours now in PHP. So let's go ahead and grab the rest of the data here. So let's go ahead and create some variables. So username, we'll set that equal to the get for the username. For password, we'll do the same thing. So we named the, the name attribute of the password input box. Uh, its value is password. So we'll say get password, and we're going to do the same thing for the submit button. And the reason that I'm assigning these to, um, to their own variables is just because it's a bit of a pain to type all this in each time you want to access something, so we can just use these to make things a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and echo these out. So let's say echo username, we'll echo out a line break. We'll then copy this line break. We'll echo out the password. Insert a line break. We'll echo out the submit. And then we should be good to go. So now that we have all this data, let's take a look at what it looks like to use a get request 
to send it from our form to our process.php page. So let's save it, let's jump over to Chrome, come back to our form and refresh, and let's enter a username of Jamie and a password of password, and we're just gonna submit it. So you'll notice that all of our data was submitted using this get request, uh, and we can pick it up in PHP using our PHP um, get variables, and then we can do whatever we want with it, in this case, print it out to the screen. So one thing to note that with a get request is that it's not that secure uh, and, and if you're using one of it, to, if you're using one of these requests to send data, you're going to want to make sure that you're not using it to send sensitive data or um, secure data like a password or a credit card number. And the reason for that is that this type of request actually sends the data uh, in the form of URL parameters. So you'll notice that our username is in the URL and our password is in the URL, as is the fact that we clicked the submit button. So it's important to you know, kind of maintain some vigilance here uh, just to make sure you don't, you know, use GET requests to send personal information. Uh, and another thing that too with uh, with GET requests is that you can actually change the data here. So we can say testing and it will actually show up on your page. A couple other things to keep in mind with GET requests is that they can be cached, the, uh, they can be bookmarked. So you can bookmark this page here and each time you submit it, it's just going to do the same thing. Um, whereas POST requests, which we'll talk about in just a second, cannot be. Uh, another thing with GET requests is they also have uh, data limits, so you can only send so much data using POST requests. It depends on the server setup that you're using, but uh, it's usually in the thousands of characters, so you're not going to necessarily have to worry about running out of space, but just something to keep in mind if you're planning on sending, you know, paragraphs of text or something like that. So let's jump back over to Adam and let's talk about the second type of request in this tutorial, and that is a POST request. So in order to use a POST request, Let's jump over to our index.html and change the forms method to post. Let's save that and let's jump over to process. Uh, and in order to use a post request in PHP, it's very similar to a get request, but all we got to do is change the variable here to post. For all three of these, we'll do that. And then there we go. So it basically works the exact same way when we're trying to process the data. You can use this to do whatever you want with the data. Uh, and technically, um, we're accessing the the names, the name attributes value in the post associative array, just like with get. So let's jump back over to Chrome and test this out here. Uh, so if we jump back to our form, refresh, and we'll enter in a username of Jamie and a password of testing. When we go ahead and submit this, you notice that we get all this information, but it doesn't show up in the URL. And this is more secure, so if you're going to be sending somebody's passwords to log them into a, uh, a service, or maybe you're processing credit card information, something like that, uh, it's important to not use the GET request, use the POST instead. It's a little bit more secure, can't be cached, uh, somebody can't send that link to their friend or bookmark it, or change the data in the uh, URL itself. And um, there are uh, also no restrictions on the amount of data that you can send. So if you have somebody that's submitting a blog post that's, you know, 10,000 words long, you don't have to worry about them, um, all that data being sent via the URL here. So that's basically how you would go about using GET and POST requests. One thing I want to notice, uh, I want to note though, is that I mentioned that we have the submit value here, and it seems kind of silly that we'd actually want that value. But what you can do is if you're creating um, like a login page or something, is you can check to see if the user clicked the submit button um, by checking if this is set. And if they didn't click it, you can redirect them back to the index page. So for example, somebody can't end up on this page unless they click the submit button. Uh, so they can't just bookmark it and go to it. So that's basically get and post requests. Uh, feel free to play around with them. Feel free to practice sending other types of data. And uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. Thanks.